Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall, offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17, and if you use my SKAG code, you get 20% off, lowering the price to $13. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time, and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Excuse me, but I'm very busy right now. Far too busy to talk right now. I'm the mayor, after all. Asian Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to Night City, my channel, my channel, welcome to my channel. So today's video is a video that I've been eagerly wanting to give you uh, as fast as possible, but just for this video I had to do like 200, over 200 benchmarks, so yeah, I think 210 benchmarks just for this video, not counting on the side-by-side -side comparison, so it took a lot of time, but finally we have it today. Vega 56 versus the RX 5700 XT versus the RX 6800. For this test I'm testing at 1080p, 1440p and 4K and all GPUs are tested at stock and overclocked settings. So basically this is the thing that I added new so uh, in my previous GPU comparison videos I only used um, the overclocked values so now we have stock and overclocked values and for the RX 6800 we have the stock values, the overclocked values, and the overclocked plus smart access memory values. So that's a big plus. If you don't know what smart access memory is, just wait for the conclusion because I will explain it, what it is basically there. So don't miss it. So yeah, basically, without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. And let's now go finally to the benchmark. Today's first game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a new game added to our testing list. In here we can see the differences right away. Vega 56 struggles to get over 60 average FPS at 1080p even after overclocked. The RX 5700 XT has almost the same 1% lows as Vega 56 has on averages. And the RX 6800, well, is in a league of its own, with over 110 average FPS at 1080p very high. Of course, you can get even more juice out of it by overclocking, but the main feature here is smart access memory. That alone gives us a huge performance gain in this game. At 1080p we have a massive boost of 20 average FPS and 15 FPS in the 1% lows, which is crazy taking in consideration that all you have to do is turn on that feature in BIOS. Crazy. Let's move on. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. 
I'm here. The second game is Remedy's Control. If you haven't played this game, well, give it a try since it is pretty good. As for results, holy shit! Vega 56 handles things pretty well here once overclocked. The RX 5700 XT gets more 1% lows once overclocked also, but the RX 6800 has phenomenal performance in this game. I was expecting a big difference, but not this big. We're talking of 78 FPS difference from the RX 5700 XT to the RX 6800 in a heavy game as this one. 78 average FPS. As for the 4K results, you can see that while the RX 5700 XT struggles to get 30 average FPS, the RX 6800 is around the 60 average FPS mark, which is awesome. Great results overall. Now we have another addition to our tests, Gears 5. The results here aren't as crazy as in Control, but the differences are still pretty big. Using Ultra settings, Vega 56 still handles around 60 FPS at 1080p, while the RX 5700 XT has those averages at 1440p. The RX 6800 is around 60 average FPS, but at 4K. So in this game we can say that each card gives you the same amount of FPS, but at a different resolution. Smart access memory does boost things a bit for the RX 6800 once again, and makes the game playable at over 140 average FPS if you're going for 1080p. Overall, interesting results for all cards. This time with Ghost Recon Breakpoint using very high settings and Vulcan API. This is the only game so far where Vega 56 actually manages to handle over 60 average FPS at 1440p, in this case around 86 average FPS once overclocked, which is pretty good for an aging card such as this one. Although the results seem insignificant once we see over 180 80 average FPS with the RX 6800, so literally more than double of what Vega 56 offers you, while consuming around the same 220 watts. Insane. In this game, even the RX 5700 XT fares pretty well for 4K 60 FPS, but if you want to have more room for ultra settings, the RX 6800 is advisable. Once again another new game added, and this time it is Horizon Zero Dawn. This game is known to be pretty CPU heavy and had lots of optimization problems in the beginning that seem to be fixed by now, more or less. In here we see once again Vega 56 pulling decent numbers even at 1440p, and the RX 5700 XT having once again a fair margin over it, at all resolutions. RX 6800 is the only car that can push over 60 FPS at 4K, even only using high settings instead of ultra. And if you're aiming for 1080p 144Hz, this card will also manage to give you above that. And quite surprisingly, this time, Smart Access Memory did not do anything at all, apart from a small bump in the 1% lows at 1080p. So let's move on.
Now with our beloved Red Dead Redemption 2 and some awesome results. This game's inbuilt benchmark is known to be quite heavy on the minimums with the AMD cards, but that seems to have changed with the RX 6000 series. As you can see, Vega 56 and the RX 5700 XT wouldn't pass the 40 minimum FPS mark, no matter what, not even if I decreased settings. That seems to be finally fixed with the RX 6800, that for my surprise has more minimum FPS than the RX 5700 XT has on averages. Interestingly, overclocking and undervolting the card makes the minimums go to 30s again. But gladly, once you mix the OC and OV with smart access memory, things get even more insane and we get a huge bump in averages and even higher results in the minimums. Let's see what the next game brings. Now with the still vastly played Rainbow Six Siege using Ultra settings and Vulcan API. In this game the three cards presented fare really well and even Vega 56 can get over 70 average FPS at 4K Ultra. Unless you are playing competitively or you play at really high resolutions at a really high refresh rate, you won't really need an upgrade since as seen this game is really well optimized. If you want to get the max FPS possible, then getting the RX 6800 is the clear way to go, but if anything above 70, 5 or 120 FPS is enough, even the RX 5700 XT will fulfill your needs. The last game with side-by-side -side comparisons is The Division 2, using the X12 and Ultra settings. This is another title where Vega 56 still handles around 60 average FPS at 1440p and I think you'll be able to get 60 FPS at 4K if you decrease some graphical settings. Once again we see how little to no gains we get by overclocking the RX 5700 XT and that the RX 6800 is the only car that can really push 4K 60 FPS at ultra settings. Still, the three cards perform really well for their time slash price brackets at 1080p and 1440p. And of course, aiming for high FPS numbers at ultra, RX 6800 it is. Metro Exodus is another excellent title, and I myself played it till the end of the main story and also played the DLCs and I am no FPS person, so that's how good the game is. In terms of results, Vega 56 once again manages to pull around 60 average FPS at 1440p, showing how the card actually aged well. The RX 5700 XT still stands strong, providing us over 65 average FPS at 1440p. Although, RX 6800 is obviously on a league of its own, bringing us over 120 average FPS. Also, this is the second game after Horizon Zero Dawn, where we have absolutely no gains from using smart access memory. Interesting. Today's last game is Forza Horizon 4, which is one of the best optimized games I've ever seen taking in consideration how good it looks. I'm using max settings and 2 times MSAA, and even Vega 56 can push around 100 average FPS at 1080p and over 80 average FPS at 1440p. Obviously, if we look at the RX 6800 results, the other ones seem dull, since we have over 2 140 average FPS at 1080p and over 100 average FPS at 4K. 
Smart Access Memory has once again a main role and brings a huge gain across all resolutions, taking in consideration that it is free and easy to activate. So, with all this being said, let's go to the conclusion. So, concluding guys. <laughs> yeah, this, this shit just broke. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking piece of garbage. So yeah guys, what do you think about the results? Obviously, the RX 6800, once, once you can actually get one, or once you can get one at the MSRP, it is a monster. It is faster as, as seen in other uh, benchmark videos. I do not have the RTX 3070 to test against, but I've seen that it is faster than the RTX 3070. Um, it is faster and it has SAM to help, uh, so actually even faster. This card is a literal monster. This card uses the same power as the other one, so from 200 to 230 watts, so basically around the 220 mark most of the times. All cards use the same power and you can see the differences in terms of performance. Not counting the inflated prices, let's talk about the MSRP prices once, once uh, things actually settle down to normal pricing, uh, no scalpers, no miners and so on, at least not in this scale of course and once we have more stock to actually reduce the prices, I think that Vega 56 is uh, an option obviously just if you get one really cheap $150, $100, $200 at max and that's pushing it a lot. Uh, but basically it is a 1080p card that can also play some games at 1440p if you tweak the settings here and there. The, the RX 5700 XT is still a good card if you get it for let's say like $300. For $300 it is still a pretty damn great card so you can run most games at 1440p no problem, some at 1440p ultra wide if you tweak the settings and even some of them, not all, but some of them you can run at 4K60 if you also tweak settings. Now, the RX 6800 once again is a monster. If you can get one or if you can get one at a decent price, get it. As for the SAM Smart Access Memory, like I said, I'm explaining it now. Smart Access Memory is actually a way, the way that the CPU access the VRAM in your GPU. So the traditional way, I think it is, it is uh, for example, a max, they can access a max of 256 megabytes. So imagine if the CPU wants to access one gigabyte of VRAM, it has to make four calls of 256 uh, megabytes to, ac to actually access one gigabyte. And now with the, with the SAM, Smart Access Memory, the CPU has, uh, for example, let's say the CPU wants to access two gigabytes instead of making eight calls, it just has to make one call to access the full two gigabytes. And that increases the efficiency a lot and makes the FPS higher. So hence the results we've seen in this video. Thanks a lot for watching, seriously. You can also get this shirt in the, in the link below in my store if you want an ancient gameplay shirt, you can get one. They are not expensive, so you can get one quite cheap. Uh, and once again, thanks a lot for watching, seriously. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. And well, see you in the next one guys, seriously.